day two of the WSIS Plus 20 Forum high-level event and a chance for more than 150 female leaders to come together to talk about the unique challenges women face. Today uh, is about you. Uh, we want this to be uh, an interactive discussion, but my hope would be that we're not just networking, that we're actually looking at concrete things that we can do. On the menu, Questions such as how much access do women currently have globally to technology? The Network of Women group were reminded to show up and be powerful. I think this network is very important uh, to convene all these powerhouses of women from all walks of life that have very unique stories to tell and a journey to share with others, to, to look at not only the opportunities they receive but the challenges they had to overcome. <laughs> Gender doesn't exist on its own, and so there are inequalities that relate to the cross-section of gender and race and um, geographical provenance, ethnicity. Um, so there's so many inequality questions that we that we have to consider. I know from my region, historically, Latin America and the Caribbean has, one of the most, has been one of the most unequal regions in the world. There's a real buzz in the room as all of these women have come together to share their personal stories on what they continue to do to accelerate equality. Each other. Women tend to say more often no uh, to certain invitations, sometimes for instance to speak in public, and that put them into a disadvantage. It's widely recognised women have a natural capacity to bring people together, and increasingly bold female leadership is going to be needed if the UN's Sustainable Development Goals are to be achieved. Women is a big factor uh, in helping and supporting and bridging that digital divide. Um, just by women participation, uh, participation in, in a digital economy, that can increase up to $500 billion to the economy by 2030. Whilst more people than ever are connected to the internet, around a third of the world isn't. And the millions of kilometres of submarine fibre optic cables that underpin the entire global internet have been the focus of the conversation today. We need not just to have connectivity for all, but meaningful connectivity. That means affordability, and that means people who can use their access to the internet in ways that really benefit their lives. We need to have good data infrastructure as well as digital infrastructure and connectivity beyond the, the urban areas to move to the rural areas and to use digital and its application on agriculture, on health, on governance, like that, yeah. Digital innovation is at the heart of the 18 projects awarded WSIS prizes. This year, recognition for developing contributions to areas including health, education and government. To this project, we are aimed at building an innovative solution to allow women do self-breast screening from home while connecting them with uh, health specialists and also creating a community where these women could meet other survivors and other women. Ministers gathered to discuss their experiences of developing a more inclusive information society, acknowledging that human rights are at the centre of their goals. It's a great opportunity to align the future vision of the world in terms of telecommunication, AI, responsible AI, connectivity. There's been yoga sessions to remind everyone to take a moment in the day. And with the Swiss taking over the chair of WISIS this year, the Alphorn music is fitting. The day began with a rich collection of personal stories about empowering women in technology. And it ended with a ministerial round table where leaders from around the world acknowledged with the speed of AI, there is still much work to be done. Join us tomorrow for day three of the WSIS Plus 20 Forum high-level event.